I'm on mute. Let me do that again. <laughs> I just noticed that. I'm on mute. There we go. So let's do it again. Great song by the Staple Singers, by the way. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe Show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers that's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And I am a featured contributor of the Fly Nubian Queen Network, which is powered by Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. And that is the place where the Black women have a voice. And their YouTube channel keeps on growing, 581,000 subscribers and growing. And also, I am a contributor, featured contributor on the Indie Soup Media OTT over the top. I think that's what they call it, OTT. OTT. I think it's... I'm just making it up along the way. Network, which is powered by Dr. Tachi. And Indie Soup Media is a only been around for about three weeks now. Content Creators Network that's featured on YouTube, Roku, and Instagram. And uh, that reach of that network is over 1 million people. I also sit on their advisory board, so double for your trouble. Here's the thing. Indie Soup Media, this is their handle. So we got that going. So before we go any further, I want to say we're broadcasting live on so April 20th. April done, family. April done. Want to thank want to thank all the people who are watching live too and on the replay, especially on the Fly Nubian Queen Network. Appreciate not taking for granted. So why don't I bring up the main reason why you're here? It's not me. It's this person. It's that person. It ain't I. It ain't I. Aisha K. Lala, what is going on, family? Hey, what's up? What's up? Feeling good. Well, of course you're feeling good. Yeah, I kind of had a great whirlwind. I mean, it's a dream come true. So we went to Portugal, we went to Spain, and we went to Morocco. And we recorded pieces of two new songs um, to grab onto the whole idea of our Globetrotter um, project which where we, wherever country we go, we try to record a piece of music. Um, so Globetrotter A and Globetrotter B, we've already been to many continents, but uh, we've really um, created something wonderful to hook to also other musicians around the world. And it's nothing like it. I can honestly say that I am very happy to say that I have sang in those countries and had beautiful responses to it. How was it touring with your hubby again? Oh, we had so much fun. Guys, we would, we saw stuff that was like crazy. We were in Morocco and there was sheep everywhere. Sheep and donkeys and camels. And we were riding down the road. I kid you not. We were riding, coming back to go to Spain. And there's this flatbed truck in front of us. And we're like, oh, let's just get around it. And all of a sudden, this camel's head pops up out of the back. And he's looking around like, where is he? He's in the back of the flatbed truck. We had so much fun. So much fun. I, I lost my voice because of the weather down there. So I'm just getting it back. So if I crack tonight, guys, just, just bear with me. I thought you lost it there for a second. When you went back like this and I heard nothing. Did she lose her voice? See, again, I thought yeah. you lose your voice. So how, mu how much of this is documented? Because there's got to be a little mini documentary coming out. It of is. It, it is. I mean, we have so much footage. <laughs> and, yeah. And I actually sent some to Aisha. But Aisha, we got more. Hubby was like, here's some more. Let's put some more in there. So, um, and we actually, speaking of, of traveling, tomorrow is the anniversary of, of Prince getting his wings. I don't, I don't celebrate death days. I just don't, but I want to honor him. But we did do our song that we did with Jill. Jill was honored us to perform on um, dubs. And also um, we thank you. And so we performed that. And a lot of people were really happy to hear that. And people still, you know, love him. All right. Aisha J. Aisha K. Staggers. It's been a melancholy time for you recently yeah uh uh well the, the week was it was an odd week um all week i felt like something wasn't right oh. and then um yesterday as i was going into an appointment i learned that something wasn't right 
So we're, we're going to do a tribute to her at the end. But um, Mandisa, uh, I knew her as Mandisa Lynn Hundley. Um, just finding out that she passed away, um, it, it was hard because it's my sister back from Fisk days. And um, she loved Whitney Houston. And she and Whitney Houston both died at the same age. Oh, wow. It's also hard. Um, but, you know, we called her Star Disa. She called me Robin. Wow. And um, yeah, so it, it was that kind of it was that kind of week, keeping track of the news, and then having you know some of your worst feelings and thoughts come to fruition. Okay, Aww. understood. Well, condolences to you, their family, and all their loved ones during this very challenging time. Uh, the family is here. So, of course, you know who's in first? Jen Myers. Hey, Jen Myers. Fitnets IQ Cam is in the house. Fitnets IQ Cam says, Lala, loving the lipstick. Uh-huh. And to pull the purple out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. JG Mars, of course, from Colorado. How are things in Colorado? Uh, Jen is giving hearts to Aisha. Oh, Sylvia Paris is in the house from Scotia. What is up? Sylvia Paris, hope you, your family, and the Scotia family are fine and safe. Always great to have you here. Make, make sure you're giving yourself grace and don't just manage your time, manage your energy. JJ Mar says it's cold, snowy, and foggy here. But it's cool here in Toronto. It's it's okay, but it could be could be better. Could be better weather-wise. And right, they got snow in Minnesota, actually. Oh, it, did they? And it can stay there. It can yeah. stay there. And Ryan says, very sorry yeah. for your loss, Aisha. Ryan, yeah. thank you for still hanging in there. From being an intern to becoming a, a supporter, appreciate you big time. Before we, we do some appetizer stuff. So I see this afternoon that the House passed a funding bill for Ukraine yeah. and yeah. Israel. So here's my question. How but the breaking news now is like, oh, 37 House Democrats didn't vote voted against Israel aid. How is that news when you had most of the Republicans want to turn it down to begin with? Mm, that's I, what I want to know. They're going to always try to turn it on hey, us when that wasn't 37 it. 37 House Democrats versus, how, what, 100 or so uh, Republican members? Come on now. Well, and, and how long is, is it, is it Johnson? Mike Johnson? Yeah. Oh, they're going to get him out of there. They can't stand him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they what, though? Here's the thing. They're talking about getting rid of him. Um, but I don't, I don't. I don't think they will. I think that she's like on her BS right now, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I, I, I honestly think that um, she's going to, she, if she does, it's because she wants to be speaker. Mm. Oh, oh, she yeah. wants to be speaker. She's just pretending that she doesn't want to be I think, speaker. I think she wants to be speaker because she knows Donald Trump's not going to choose her as a VP can't a VP running mate. He's he's just not. She doesn't have the look. So um, her being, you know. Um, Speaker of the House is the next is the highest position of power she could get because she, she'd be in line, she'd be in the line of succession for the presidency. Well, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, not not gonna happen. No, no they're not gonna no. let her have that. She's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> well, the, the thing is that they gotta rely on Democrats to save um, Mike Johnson's seat. And yeah, because he's working yeah. hard right now. Like he's trying Here's to keep thing. saving on with both his fingernails, all of them, because they they can't yeah. get him out. Well, because here's the thing: there's like two. Um, you have to excuse me, my blood pressure cuff went off for some reason. Two. Um, you you've got like these two fractions in the Republican Party, yeah. so they're going to be split on how they vote. But Democrats also gained one seat. So yes. Democrats are going, you know, they, if they voted and stuck behind Hakeem Jeffries, all of them, guess who'd be the winner? We got 
got all sorts of shenanigans going on. Like it's like a whirlwind, a tornado going on in our government right now. You don't know where to look. <laughs> Nothing, no, never changes. Never changed. Well, you know what? Could have been Marjorie over there behind on the flatbed with the camel self. It could have been her. <laughs> Maybe she's trying to cause problems in Morocco. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> OMG. Just saying. I just, no, I'm not <laughs> saying I'm just saying. I'm not saying I'm just saying, right? One of those yeah. lines. But mm. uh, yeah, that, that, yeah he, he seems to be on like pins and needles every movie makes with the Republican, fellow Republicans. But here's the thing, though, Dr. Vibe. They set this precedent of getting rid of speakers like they're water drops. Yeah. This is all they're doing. And Kevin this McCarthy allowed doing. it. Kevin McCarthy allowed it because he wanted to be speaker so bad. It's like that was that was the compromise he made. That was a that's a dumb compromise. So basically, you can just wake up like, on the wrong side of the bed and then and blow in. All right. So Sylvia Paris, love it. Yes, I love it when you can get. We love to you catch it live and spread the news out, especially on the East Coast. And <laughs> JG Mar says Marjorie Taylor Green is not too bright. She's not that far above the local moron here in Colorado, Lauren Bober. I know, I know it. It's, it's, they it's run sad together. It's sad because when you rank the two, Marjorie Taylor Green ranks just above Lauren Boebert. <laughs> and Lauren, and uh, Lauren is really holding on for her dear self too, trying to run for oh. different areas to keep herself inside because okay. nobody want her anymore. She keeps moving around, changing districts. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's, it's like this isn't alphabet soup here. You don't get to <laughs> yep. around in the bowl and pick the letters you want until you get what you want. No, that's oh, right. Man. And Regina, I'm in out in the sticks with reception. I will watch replay. Welcome back, Lala. No problem. You Thank catch you. it, and Regina. No problem. But yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm just going. Wow, like they they like they like recycle new leaders. On I'm surprised he's lasted this long. Yeah, me too. I really am shocked because they didn't like him from the get go. Well, see, this, remember Marjorie Taylor tried to um, she 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 threatened to introduce do those things as soon as he was sworn in. Yep, showed so did she couldn't even wait. My man didn't even give, take his hand off the Bible before she was ready. Well, look, she but didn't but that's too much. That's, that's appropriately her because remember she had articles of impeachment for Joe Biden ready before she even took office. She sure did. Wow. She is so sickening. She just makes me sick to my stomach. I literally cannot look at this woman. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, and that's what happens when you let crazy and deranged in Congress. Yep. Well, <laughs> we can even and get them all about it. Already crazy and deranged. She's at home. It's the asylum. <laughs> It, yes, there you go, Aisha. That's perfect. OMG. Anything else we want to talk about in the appetizers before we get to main course? Are we good? We good. We got all sorts of main courses. <laughs> get ready. Y'all gonna have to let your let your waistbands out after this episode. <laughs> like a turkey dinner. Mm. I haven't heard that one. Let your waistbands out. Yeah, we're gonna need okay. to put your sweatpants on. Okay, before we go any further, let's do some stuff here. Primetime Saturday at Patreon. Catch the 10 and 10 episodes. There's the link there. The store. Buy them products. Do that thing. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a mug with maybe we'll get a mug with Lala's face with a purple lipstick. <laughs> Actually, she has it in the um in the uh the main promo. Yeah. And so we do have mugs and things with her. With yeah, there, yes. The the purple. Yeah. Uh, the purple and the, the flirty hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Join the prime time Saturday Discord group. Please email me at dr period vibe at the dr vibe com. Subscribe to the Dr. Vibe show, especially on YouTube and hit the mm -hmm. notification button. And then follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And then if you want to advertise your business product or service on the platform, please email me dr period vibe at the drvibeshow.com. All right. Monday, Monday, 45 jury seated. Opening arguments being on Monday, Monday, Monday. Go ahead, ladies. Mama's in the papa song. <laughs> there you go. Who's going to kick it off? I was on need to know is 
Somebody had to just, just do it. They had to release that my man fell asleep and farted in court. This is the, the funniest yes, I, I, thing. I, yes. Okay. First of all, thank you. Let's address the big stinky elephant in the room that is yes. Donald Trump. So I don't. Okay. So his his attitude and decorum in court. He it's about as trashy as those people that show up to his rallies in all the flag gear and the Trump hats and and the sparklers and everything. Yes. Yes. And he had the nerve. He had the nerve to be calling Joe Biden Sleepy Joe. Sleepy. That's what's killing me. The whole you thing. You know, he's sleep. calling Sleepy Joe. And you fall asleep in court. You are on trial, dude. You but can't Lala. even keep yourself open. But Lala, as much true crime and stuff as we watch, you know, every time on 48 hours, when they get the person that they know is guilty, what's the first thing they want to do when they get in the um, interrogation room? What? Sleep. Right. All sleep. the guilty ones want to sleep every yep. time. Every time you'll start, start, you know, if you haven't noticed yet, start watching those shows and you'll you better start watching when they get cornered and, and it's, it's over. They start falling. They won't be like, they fall asleep. They try to fall asleep on the, on the table or whatever, but uh -huh. yeah. they oh. sure do. But here's the, it's, I think guys, out of all the stuff that's going on with him right now and he can't keep up. I, I am absolutely ecstatic. I am here for, for it, I want a T-shirt with this judge's picture on it because he is not letting him get away with nothing. Yeah. First, he tried to squirm out because of Barron's graduation. No, sir, you need to be here. I'm going to arrest you. Then he said, well, I can't be here because I need to go to another case. No, sir, I'm going to arrest you. He threatened a witness. He threatened a, a person, a jury person was talking loud and pointing at her. And, she was, and he was like, no, sir. We're not having this there. I will arrest you. So I'm like, I am here for you. I am finally glad to see you. also told him to sit down. So did. He I'm said, like, finally, I am here. Have a seat. <laughs> I'm so happy that we are seeing this. And if rumors are true, and, you know, usually they do a lot of the stuff is true. He is not happy with all these memes that are coming out about him and all this stuff. And you sit up there calling people out and now look at you. You are really showing your real character now. And and so this weekend he's out on the campaign trail again. I don't know what his numbers are, but if anybody at all is following him, all y'all know he's they all need to go to the cuckoo house. No, because those campaign rallies are um the, the campaign rallies, the numbers are going down. Yeah. Cause they see that's, you know, even that's a little too kooky for them, but you know, and there's just been bad news all around for him. Like he's probably not going to be able to get out of the January 6th stuff that people are calling on him. And, you know, I'm pretty sure Melania ain't having nothing of him. So I mean, from what I hear, she ain't really on board. Actually, I read a report that she's going to be going on the campaign trail for, trail for him. Well, she has to. Yeah, she made some money. Yeah. Made me money. Made me money. He can't. He has to be in. He has to be in um court every day. Let Let me ask. Uh, Somebody has to. Interesting, interesting little uh, related story. The other night, uh, do both you know who Steve, Stephen A. Smith is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. He was on. Excuse me. He was on Hannity. Who was? He was? Yes. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think that's like the time he's done this, though. Yeah. And, he did and, and he was basically saying that Black Americans sympathize for 45 because when 45 says he's been unjustly handled by the judicial system, Black Amer Black Americans can relate to that. What do you think about that commentary? Well, like, so no, that's like that so thing if somebody says, well, we feel this. Way. Who's we? Who's this we? Yeah, who's we? About? Which we are you talking about? Because it ain't me. Who are these black folks you talking about? <laughs> and they're showing the ones that he accused of in the park. And now, now one of them is sitting, sitting pretty in politics too. No, sir. No, sir. You that that not me. That's the same people who he paid at Chick Fil A talking about they support him. Well, I support him. Is, is he talking about the what? what is, it? He asked them, is he talking about the cast of that movie? What the um. The um, uh, the the um, magical Negro. 
<laughs> I mean, basically, basically, who are these magical Negroes that he's talking about support Trump? Because I don't know nobody. Not in my circles. Hmm. So did either of you think that this is this was going to become a reality? Like it's actually going to going to happen on Monday. I, I actually was, I'm uh, okay. I no, I'm going to be honest. Like there are days where I feel like nothing's going to happen to this man. And I, and it hurts me and it makes me angry as an American and as an American citizen because if it if it would have been us, if it would have been Barack Obama, this wouldn't have gotten even near this. Okay? There's nothing nothing at all. But the fact that it is happening makes my heart happy because I feel like something is being done against the injustices. I find it pretty ironic that it's going to be the porn star that's going to take him down. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's you know, it. the other thing, too, about this starting on Monday, and, and do I believe I do? Because guess what? He tried appealing every ruling. Sure did that the judge made on every motion that they proposed. And what ended up happening is that um, they, the, the appellate court came back and was like, no, 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 no. So his last ditch effort didn't work. So he nope. has to go to court. They're going to do opening arguments on Monday. Um, or they call them opening statements on Monday. So you're going to hear the prosecution lay out their case. You're going to hear the defense lay out their case. And then we're going to get to see the witnesses and the evidence. But on Tuesday, remember, there's another hearing on Tuesday in this same case, because after the gag order that was placed on him, Trump violated it seven times when they made the first, when the, um, DA made the first request, like, "Hey, um, we need to do something about this." And then, yes. another, and then another three times after that, he does so, not know when to shut up. But I think he met his match at this judge, right? Because see, the judge was going to make his his um his appearance on that date about that hearing. I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday. But once they had to do the second one and he kept doing it after he knew there was a hearing, the judge moved the data. <laughs> so is this a this is a, a New York state trial, not a federal trial, correct. correct? Correct. Okay. So basically the Supreme can the Supreme Court get involved in any way if he's he, he's found guilty? Only the state Supreme Court can, but if he's found guilty, if there is if there was anything that violated one of his federal protections. So for example, if it violated, like say uh, they find out in this stuff and they, that there was some information that violated his uh, voting rights, his voting rights, for example, in terms of how the case moved through whatever and whatever, then the Supreme Court could get involved in that. He could take that to the Supreme Court and ask for them to either overturn it or get an, a new trial because that is a violation of a federal law. But right now, he's mostly being held to New York law. And yeah, which to me is great. Which, which is great. And the thing is that if he breaks New York law, he's got to get New York punishment. Because remember, the, the federal prisons... People talking about, oh, they can't put him in prison. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, the yes, they can. I, those, those Secret Service men are just going to have to be brand new wardens and um, uh, correctional officers inside the inside the jail. Hell, you don't even have to build, you don't even have to put him in general population. Build a jail outside of the jail where it's just him and it could be surrounded by Secret Service. But he needs to be loved. But Aisha, they person. put out, somebody has put out a bill to have Secret Service removed from him. If and he, if he gets her. convicted, they are saying that he no longer, he wouldn't qualify for that anymore. I think that's, and I think that's very proper. I do too. And so even though, um, even though this stuff is going on, he, he in the middle of this says he's going to testify. No, you're oh, not. Go ahead. You, no, you're not. Oh, I say, go ahead. Go ahead. Get up on that stand. <laughs> go ahead. He, he can't do it. First of all, we know he can't control himself. But the no. reason he won't do it is that he can't lie about it. He, because That's he, right. He will be under oath. And everything that comes out of that man's mouth is a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no way that if I was his attorney, I'd be like, there's no way you're getting on the stand. If you get on the stand, you might as well accept the fact that you're going to jail. 
Can you imagine being his attorney? I mean, no. Well, no, because they already tell it, his attorney, uh, control your client. And yep, make sure, sure did. You know, he can't say that he can't do stuff. He, the, he, he knew what he was doing. And you know why? Because remember, he almost got away with it in the uh, um, E. Jean Carroll thing. Remember, he was yes. in the mumbling of the breath. And he got yes. all he did was get verbally admonished for that. So here well, he Not this time, bro. <laughs> not this time. Man, I, this why, time. Why, am I, why am I feeling Kentucky somewhere in my, my hearing right now? I'm hearing Kentucky slang going on. Got right that here. right. My <laughs> tucky come out when I get real comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but here's another I'm here for it. But here's another thing. How can you pick an impartial jury? Like who well, here's uh, the thing. That would be that's like the that's like the jury that that, that had to sit in here, Michael Jackson's case. How do you yeah. pick an impartial jury? Well, because first of all, you establish the fact that everybody knows who this guy is. Period. Yeah. Especially if you're a New Yorker, which all these people are. Yeah, yeah. all these people are. So you establish the fact that everybody knows who he is. Then you start to they like they did those 49 questions, they started to ask them things about what they thought about him because they established the fact that everybody knew him. Not only that, not only as a New Yorker, he was president for four years. So yeah. people, so everybody, oh, it's kind of hard not to know who he is. Right, so everybody knows him. So um, Tweeting every question, five seconds. Right, so the questions that they asked from that on was really to measure the degree of um, loyalty to him or hatred for him. And anyone who kind of fell in the middle is pretty much what they got. Um, I just, I think that um, the people who said that they couldn't be partial were honest. I do too. I really felt like people answered honestly. And, and, and I really love that. I love that people really answered honestly about them being on the, and then the one lady who was like, look, I can't do this. Y'all done already, the media done already let out my name. I don't want yeah. people knowing I'm on this case. So I appreciate the fact that the people were being very honest. Yeah. And, and there was one man that was interviewed by an um, NBC reporter. And he said, he said, no, I had to tell them I can't do it because he's like, I spend all my time satirizing Donald Trump on my social media. So of, of course I couldn't be impartial. So I, I think that people are more honest than what we give them credit for um, in, in these things, in these respects. Because remember the other part of it too, is that jurors can also be held accountable. Yes, they um, can. Jurors can break laws. Jurors can go to prison. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I think that also kept people honest. And, you know, I applaud those two people who are like, yeah, I can't do this because, you know, they gave enough information out there so people know who I am. They were giving out current employer, former employer, Which where they're disgusting. from, what they do, um, and, and educational background. And it's like, oh, wow, you just gave anybody and everybody Everything. all they need to just Google this person. It's pretty quite disgusting, and I don't think it should be allowed. And to be honest, I think the publication should be punished for that. This is this is our system. You you this is not this should not be allowed. Yeah, and, and it was Fox News people that did that. And and here's you know here's the one thing that I think um, might actually uh, save people who are who who are testifying is is that. I don't think this judge is going to play. No, I, I don't think so either. I think on Tuesday, he's going to put something in place. Um, I don't think he's going to play. And I think that it will it will protect the witnesses. That's one thing. The second thing is, I, I agree with the prosecution. They should not be able to give the witness list in advance to those people no. because they will show it to that person and that person will have the information out in the public. And so the fact that they were like, they, they get it the night before, like yeah. at 11 p.m., so, you know, they might argue we don't have time to prepare. Well, guess what? They took that to the appellate court. Appellate court said no. Um, so <laughs> at this point, he just has to, um, you know, own up to it. And, and it, it's going to be interesting to see what the witness list is after. Because guess what? We won't even know. 
So it's no. interesting to see. And aren't they getting ready to do backups? Make sure that they have backups. Oh, they have all they have all of them seated and sworn in. Oh, they've they got them all seated. seated. They've got their I thought the that Jack was gonna happen on Monday. I'm behind. The judge wasn't playing, he wrapped that up yesterday. He said he ain't got time to fool with this man. <laughs> he ain't got time to fool with this man. Like, I'm not spending my whole summer in this courtroom with this orange mess. No. <laughs> so we're gonna see Michael Cohen again. Yeah. No, so I'm yeah. But you know, here, here's the thing. People talk about his credibility and whatever. Guess what? Criminals lie. Yes, they do. Uh, have you known a criminal to tell the truth? There you go. Criminals lie. So guess what? He was held accountable for his crime. So now that we established that fact uh, and the defense comes out with what they think, guess what? Criminals lie. Your client is a criminal. Yeah. Of course he's going to tell the truth. Of course he's going to tell lies about Michael Cohen. The bottom, but the problem here is that remember the burden of proof lies in the prosecution. So they mm -hmm. they will they will establish the fact that Michael Cohen has been arrested, has served time for certain things like you know the things that he violated and that he was dishonest at first. Yeah, but, they they won't go unnoticed. Right. But here's the other thing is that the reason that you can trust what he says is because we've got paperwork, video, audio that supports everything that he's saying so yeah. that you know it's not a lot. And so I think that is the saving grace. What he's really worried about, he's really worried about what Stormy Daniels will say. And the I can't wait for her to get on the stand. And the reason <laughs> he's the reason, to me too, but the reason that he's afraid it has absolutely nothing to do with her outing what he did and how it affects the um, public. He's worried about what she's going to say about his size and his stamina because yeah. already she said that it was like a stack of dimes. Oh and, my gosh. And, um, and people laughed. And she, you know, afterwards, when she came out, she started putting things out like that. So he's worried about that being written into the record. She's a force to be him, reckoned with. And becoming the she's new not afraid story. of him. Yeah. Well, she has nothing to lose. Well, no. Hold on. You know what? She yeah. You never know with allies of 45. I'll just leave it at that. But True, but you know what? She got she got she got the dime on a lot of people, and they all should be shaking yeah. in their boots. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, the the other thing is, is that remember, Trump likes to portray himself as being strong and virile and manly. And mm. she can take his manhood like that. <laughs> Two snaps. M reminds me of the, oh. Uh, in living color. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I thought about. Yes. Snaps. Yes. What was that? What was the skit? What was that reoccurring skit? It was like, Smith on film. That was one of the best skits, I swear. Yeah. Half the things that we grew up in love would not be allowed today. <laughs> I know. Absolutely. April Watson says, rest to the man that set himself on fire. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I, I don't understand. I haven't really, I followed his story, but I'm not sure that the, these two things are connected. I don't, I, he, I don't he know. was really mentally unstable. Yeah. Um, he did throw flyers up in the air. Uh, yeah. And there was a couple of things that he did say about yeah. also as, uh, on Biden as well. But um, I don't think he was mentally stable. And it's just sad to hear that anytime that happens, that it happens. Yeah. He doused himself and set himself on fire. And I'm, I was thinking, and I'm thinking to myself, what, what is this Vietnam? Because remember, there were people who did that during yes, Vietnam. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, protests. And, yeah, and it's like I don't understand. Why would you set yourself on fire? What, what is you setting yourself on fire going to do as opposed to setting fire to the building? I don't know, and I feel really bad for him because there was mental illness there, and yeah, it did, and it did delay things for the day. The thing that I'm thankful for, though, and may he rest in peace, is that it didn't delay everything they took care of business got him yeah to, got him to the hospital and then they went back to the court and said um you can proceed because i yeah. think that trump, i think trump thought that was going to be something that would get him out of that day okay. so and Ryan, that's what he's praying for because he wants every day out of that court that he can get 
absolutely. Ryan says, honesty is so crucial and valuable here. I don't know how anyone could be impartial. And he corrects his spelling, honesty, but I may cover that. So impartiality, we'll see. It's going to get a good test here. Well, here's the thing. It's, it's impartial. You can have you can have hatred and dislike for someone, but when the evidence says one thing, like mm -hmm. for example, you know, it, it's like when the evidence says one thing, even though you think another, you have to go with what the evidence says. It's like if the per the person, I would like to see Trump go to jail for the things that he actually did. Yeah, uh, I true want to for, for those things. Um, but if the evidence says that he didn't, he shouldn't. But I want to make I want I want him to go because the evidence says that he does that he well that he did it, which is the way things are supposed to be, and that that's what bothers me the most about so much that's going on in the world. This whole thing of being impartial or you're all wrong just because you don't believe what I believe in, or this is not the way I grew up with. I mean, there were many people I grew up with that had different thoughts, but we honored each other by respecting each other and we would have good conversations. And then we would find out, Hey, wait a minute. We don't necessarily believe too different but we just believe in different ways of in, in, in implementing these things that we're thinking about. So we no longer have that. I feel like you can't even express yourself with so many people bashing you before you even say your name. A perfect example, like Aisha and I, we told you, you know, you saw a couple of weeks ago how we were talking and trying to educate you. The first thing out of somebody's mouth is how we look. So, but this is indicative of what's going on in the world. So we have a serious problem with being able to even communicate anymore. And that is a dangerous thing. Well, it's also, we also have to blame the technology too. And, and remember, this has a lot to do with this case because they're going to abuse technology to spread misinformation and disinformation. Of course. And the fact that, um, you know, we have, a, you have a whole generation, actually two whole generations in this country who really don't know life without a cell phone. Yeah. And so they are, they are so in tuned into that. They don't know how to have the real conversation, Lala. So if no. people, they don't know how to disagree without everybody's got to clap back at somebody and this and that, because people are watching on social media and, and they don't know, they don't have their confrontations and their conversations in private. Everything that they have is public. Yeah. You remember when it was even rude to ask somebody what they yeah. registered for? Like, you know, who'd you vote for? My mother told me that was rude. You never asked yes, anyone. Never, that. never. I mean, that that was that was how we were raised. It was like, no, you don't tell anybody who you who, who you voted for. That that's your that's your vote. Your like, and if you want to, if you want to advertise it, fine, but you don't ask someone. No, you don't you <laughs> never ask. Because guess what? with regular conversation, you can kind of suss that information out yourself. Sure. But they, they don't know how to talk to people. And, 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 and it, it's something, because Lala and I talked about this in our 10 and 10 that I'm actually gonna post tonight, The um, that um, I was saying how, you know, I tell my daughter, hey, call, call Nana, that's my mother. And she'll, you know, she'll go away a few minutes later, I'll be like, did you call Nana? Yeah, I sent her a text. And I'm like, no, I, I said, call her like they like pick up the phone <laughs> because the 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 way that they see in contacting people if you say to call someone for a lot of them picking up the phone and speaking to someone directly mm -hmm. causes a lot of anxiety yeah yeah, yeah. and so and Got so it. yeah <laughs> I mean, all right well i'm sure next week we'll have the first little rumblings of the official trial should be very interesting and never a dull moment. And we've got y'all better listen to 10 and 10 this week because I'm sure we're <laughs> like to go and jump up in there. <laughs> Those jurors better bring nose clips. Why'd you go there? Come on. Well, man. it was needed. It was needed. Somebody had to say it. Oh, geez. April says, I see. And I bless their nose hairs because oh, oh my god. god. 
I seen it live just a cloud of smoke trying to put him up. I think it's time for a break because you guys are just getting a little bit out to Ada. So let's go for a break. We'll come back in about two minutes and uh, we'll have another interesting conversation topic about some progressives in Ooh. the United States and what they are looking to get from America. So Ooh. hold it tight. We're here on Primetime Saturday with Aisha and Lala. Hold it tight. Lock it. <laughs> you know, and and that's what I feel like. You feel like you're the Harry Tubman of the mind. I am. I feel like I'm the Harry. I, I I'm one of the Harry Tubmans of intelligent black people. Like I want to liberate y'all from like being left behind and ignored <laughs> and and you know, oblivious. No, really, the rappers yeah. get all the attention. You know, seriously, does anybody else feel this way? Like like ignorant black people, they'll be all up. You know, getting all the headlines on the shade room. Overly and, sexualized black oh, folks. Over, like the, the the twerkers and the. You know, just just people that you know don't always represent the best of us. You know, the diversity. You know, like people like Doctor Vibe. Like everybody should know about people like Doctor Vibe. Doctor really Vibe should. is he's trying to do good work for, for black people. Doctor Vibe from Toronto. Good to see you, my brother. Uh, Doctor Vibe. Everybody follow Doctor Vibe. He has a great great show he's very good at what he does and i have a lot of respect for him the men who are also doing the same thing i see dr vibe in here he's a great brother everybody should follow dr vibe by the way he's a smart brother in canada and we need to follow smart people so follow dr vibe if you see him in the chat and dr vibe say your name in the chat so people can see you i want you to click on his name and i want you to go follow him please because i want these i want these men and women that are doing the right things to get the support they deserve uh, hey, Dr. Vibe, how you doing, brother? Again, I like I always do, I got to say, everybody should go follow Dr. Vibe. He's got a great show. Dr. Vibe, I know Dr. Vibe's got a kingdom because I see your channel. I see you pouring into that every day. Uh, everybody should follow Dr. Vibe, by the way. Look him up, Dr. Vibe, V-I-B-E. He's a great friend of me and my wife, and I love this guy. Okay, so let me um, hop into this. What's up, Dr. Vibe? How you doing? Everybody, if you see Dr. Vibe in the chat, everybody go follow the Dr. Vibe show. Dr. Bob is a real smart brother and a, a, a good human being. I like the guy a lot, and, and he's very intelligent, and uh, I think everyone should pay attention to what he's got going on. We got to shine the spotlight on the intelligent black people out here that are really doing the good work. Uh, don't just pay attention to the rappers and the celebrities. You know, a lot of these people are losers. Your true winners are your people in your community that are really having your back. Uh, you know, helping us to have stronger families and a stronger community. So Dr. Bob is in that category. So you might see the Dr. Bob show in this chat. If you see him, please go follow him. Okay. All right. So anyway, we are back primetime Saturday with Aisha and Lala, and we are having a good time. And uh, let's continue on with the conversation. So the American yeah. Progressive Caucus agenda for 2025. Who are these people? The progressive crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kentucky's in the house. Crazy. No, but um, Maya crazy. Delta, crazy. And, um, and some others, you know, squad and all those people are part of the progressive <clears throat> caucus. Um, I guess some people consider them the opposite of the freedom caucus. However, I read the agenda, the full set oh. of and um, they make some very good points. And not only that, but all the people who are always up here talking about, um, well, what is it so-and-so going to do for Black people? Mm -hmm. um, read this agenda because a lot of the things that they have in here um, are specifically for Black people, people of color, and other marginalized human beings. And so I um, I was really um, impressed with the, um, especially the housing part. I, I, I think that housing part was so important because they talked about um, uh, stabilizing rents. Well, that's really important. And I need to make a clarification. I forgot, I'm mixing the two up. Let me make sure that I'm correct. I'm mixing the two up of the ones that came out and called themselves farts. Sorry, Aisha, I was thinking the other group. So no, no, these people are not crazy. It's the other people who are crazy. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we have to, just as a side, the, um, Republicans in the House that don't agree with uh, what Michael Johnson is doing has called themselves the Freedom something. Anyway, the acronym spells FART. So yeah. that is what they call themselves. And all the news headlines are like, oh, the silent but deadly, you know, FART team. Yeah. It, it, it's so just, I it, had those two mixed up. Sorry. 
So this, yeah, it, it's easy. But remember, we because we went over Project 2025, yes. that's the reason why I brought this up, because the progressive agenda for 2025 is, um, it, it has the more, it, it has a lot of teeth. It's an actual platform and it's designed to help to help people. Like, for example, like I said, under the housing, increase the supply of affordable housing, eliminate the fair cloth amendment to allow for needed expansion of public housing stock, provide incentives to convert vacant commercial facilities into residential properties. That's a tax credit for a business. Yeah. I mean, they, um, they talk about um, doing more for homeowner assistance, um, affordable Which housing. Is so needed. Right. In the Affordable Housing Acquisition Fund, they want to establish a permanent fund to prevent the loss of viable rental options in the wake of an economic downturn. So if we have another pandemic, they're going to make sure that people's rents are lowered so that they can survive that pandemic. Yeah, they can That's make it. That mm -hmm. they can, that the government can subsidize that. So, you know, and, and talking specifically about, um, about Black people, universal child, child care is something that our community needs. It yeah. is something that our community needs. Um, they talk about Medicaid and Medicare. And the thing is, they want to expand them, which is at the, which is an excellent thing. And not only the affordable drug manufacturing is what they want, they want all the drugs now to be made affordable, um, not just for seniors, but for everyone. They want to also... Um, crack down on maternal and infant mortality, address the maternal and infant mortality crises and their disproportionate impacts on communities of color, particularly black women. That is something very specific that they want to do for black people, for all those folks who come on here and be like, oh, what are they gonna do? Right. That is something very specific for us. So I would I would encourage you to read um, to read this, I think anyone who reads this um, agenda for the, this progressive agenda, I think anyone who reads it um, and really pays attention to what's in it, the voting choice is obvious. And I'm not just talking oh. about the presidential, I'm talking about the down ballot races, because that those are the ones that make up the progressive caucus. So but the, I, the thing is, they also made it a point to seriously address these things. It's not like they just threw a list together. They actually kind of gave action plans behind this. How, how so, yeah. So so it's not like they're just throwing it out there like what these crazy other people just throwing anything out there at this point um, and not having a plan or an agenda to get these things in place. Right. Literally, this other group that we were talking about, the fart, I'm, and, and we're, it's, it sounds like a joke, but we're saying the fart thing, but it's truly a group yeah. um, are, are there just to be disruptors and to really not have any kind of plan whatsoever, because we all know the GOP has no plan at all right now. Right. So and that was a choice. Remember, somebody said, well, what is your um, platform going to be? And they're like, we don't have one. Yep, sure did. Just said that straight out front. How's that for disruption? Well, just before we go on with this uh, conversation, uh, a visitor has come back. Let me just pull it up. Look who's back in the house. Look who's back in the house. Someone <laughs> named Michelle Award is back. Hey, Michelle. Hey, girl. Hey. Michelle says, hey, y'all. She's going, hey, y'all. <laughs> and she also says, uh, this may be looked at as socialism. Your thoughts? You know what? When did they make that a bad I word? Think, I think unless people read it, they they'll hear, "Oh, it's socialist! It's socialist! It's socialist!" Um, I don't understand what's socialist about capping the cost of medications. Yeah, God everybody. knows. When when we're the only country w that pays what we do for healthcare out <laughs> of pocket, it, it's the really quite sad. Yeah. 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 Wait, the, and remember too, the, the Republicans are talking about the IRS. Guess what? That's in here too. Improve the IRS. 
provide free filing tools and pre-prepared returns to all Americans, protect and increase resources for the IRS to improve customer service, close the tax gap, and modernize its operations to better serve taxpayers. Everybody hates the IRS for, for the very reasons of the things that they want to fix, okay? Exactly. So I think that unless you actually sit and take time and read it, and then and then not only read it, but each point, take it and apply it to your life. Take it and say, yeah, well, see how it affects you or your loved ones. Happens, right. If this happens, I can do X, Y, and Z, or so-and-so can do X, Y, and Z, or so-and-so will be protected from this. So, you know, especially like the reason I said the housing one was so interesting to me was because remember, we have a generation here right now of young people who cannot go out and get an apartment because they can't afford it, even with roommates. So you have young people getting out of college and living with their parents longer because the because the rents just aren't affordable. This they have something in here to make the rents affordable, not only to make the rents affordable, but put provide subsidies for people. It's like, what can you pay? We'll get the difference. Right. Right. Which is so needed. It, it's interesting. I, there was this young gentleman on TikTok this week and I was just scrolling through doing my normal thing, just zombieing out. And this dude came on with such a good, I, my heart broke for him because the first thing he says is, how is it that I make four times the minimum wage and I can't afford to move out of my parents' house. He said, I don't have anything fancy. I don't drive a fancy car. I don't eat out a lot. I don't go out a lot. I'm pretty much a homebody. But by the time I pay my car payment, my gas payment, how can I afford $2,500 rent on a studio apartment um, and then it be expected to pay for the utilities and anything else to feed myself or whatever. How am I supposed to do this? He was literally asking questions for real, not making a joke out of it. Or he's like, I want to be on my own. I do not want to be in my parents' home, but I can't afford it on what I make with two jobs, making four times more the minimum wage. And his point was right on, right on the nail. Yeah. And you know, someone had a video a TikTok video that was circulating where he was saying how um, you want to fix Congress. One of the things, first of all, let's cut out um, the, you having to fly to Congress and us having to pay for it. Uh, we have Zoom. You you all can Zoom in your your um, sessions. And also we have tech, the technology that you can vote from home. Um, I then, loved his analogy. Yeah, I thought I, it was I loved perfect. it when he said that. Then he said, um, as far as their salary, they need to make the minimum wage of their state. For their state. That would be what they what they are paid. And and he had some other things to do. He had five things, but those two stuck out to me because I bet, put it this way, we would have good people, people who mean well in Congress who want to do the right thing if they had to make the minimum wage of their state. That's right. As salary. Instead of getting paid no, by all I these lobbyists. No extras, because guess what? The person that does that has heart and passion for the people. Well, just to interrupt for a second, Michelle says our candidates, our local candidates matter so much. Mm -hmm. She goes, I need to read it because I want to know how it ties into the infrastructure law and the CHIPS Act. Yeah, both of those are mentioned in it. And then she goes, people read? When did that start again? Yeah. And then uh, she also says, I see some Justice 40 in this Congressional Progressive Caucus Proposition Agenda Executive Summary. And again, I've actually sent, I sent out two different messages to all the platforms. I sent out the long link first for the document, but then I resent it with a shorter link. So take a look at the um, post I put out there in the comments with a shorter link, and it'll take you right to that document. Continue on, yes. ladies. I suggest everyone read it. If what you need to do is you need to sit and read Pro Project Twenty Twenty Five, and then mm -hmm. read, the, and then then read this Progressive Caucus Agenda Twenty Twenty Five, and make your decision on who you're going to vote for, because um, one of those is designed. Everything in it that they have is designed to strip you of your freedoms. 
The other and one we is don't to, have try to let you guess for which that one is. We did a whole show on that one. So if you don't have time to read it, which I hope you do, please go back and watch our show a couple of weeks yeah. ago because we truly broke it down for you. Yeah. And so, and even still, compare this conversation we're having about this agenda to that conversation we had about 2025 and make your vote. I think that there are some things in here that I, I really think that if he, that if he, had the audacity to um, speak on them publicly and declare them things, Joe Biden would have no problem with the groups that he's struggling with right now, especially yeah, why young, he get young people, this? especially young people. I think that he, I think that um, they just released it. So I hope that his, um, campaign people are like no you've got to you got to start saying some of these things because honestly this progressive caucus agenda it really speaks to young people i can see it's 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 the kind of stuff that remember young people liked that bernie sanders was talking yeah. about they've got loan forgiveness in here but they've got some other things about student loans and helping to reduce and reduce the cost of them and whether or not you know you can be charged x y and z because guess what it if Joe Biden doesn't doesn't get to um, forgive everybody's loans. You got to remember these loan companies. I can't tell you how many times my student loans were sold, and every time they're sold, oh God, you don't even know who owns them anymore. That interest gets put on you. You're you're paying the interest on what they sold, and so you're wondering like, how am I ever going to get out this hole? Because they keep selling, and I keep getting back you know, a backup of fees. And it's like, you know what, you can go, you can feel like you have half of your student loans paid and then they sell it at the last minute and you're back at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. The very, and so, very beginning. And right, you and think so, you're, you're going to your grave with the student loan debt. No, that's not even a joke. That's truth. Yeah. And so this, um, this project 2025, you can look at how they have these things set and you can really see what could what legislation could come from it with project 2025 there's no legislation that can come for it that's one man saying i want to go after everybody i hate this mm -hmm. here is a plan for how to make things more equitable and a good plan how to give people opportunities and how to fix what's broken I like to see them try to debate this because honestly, it is a really good plan. Well, you can't debate something if you don't have a, 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 a good plan in place. And this is a good plan in place. Now, nobody is saying this is a, a be all, say all. This is exactly how it's going to go. You know, you got to plan things, right? Plans sometimes change, but it's still a good basis. Yes. Right. So Michelle, yeah. Michelle says, when my sisters told me their student loan company was acquired, I screamed. And then also she says that student loan company was for the borrower. OMG, I told them to pay off their loans ASAP. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh -huh. most of these most of these companies are for the banks. They, they in their own business. It's like you know, remember they, remember there used to be Freddie Mac, Sally Mae, and I yes, forgot, and I forgot the other female one. But um, <laughs> you know, uh, Sally Mae swallowed up Freddie Mac. He didn't have a chance. Sure did. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. and then and then she took up the other one too. It is the last B I T C H D ending, mm -hmm. and even she sells out from time to time to other companies. Yeah, that's what's scary. Wow! So your suggestion, everyone should read it. Yes. Okay, it's it's. It's a must read, and Michelle, I think some people will just 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 to just to say some people still do read. Just want to make sure you read. It's only seven pages compared to the nine hundred pages that the Republicans wrote. How many? It's only seven. The um, Project Twenty Twenty Five is nine hundred pages. Yeah, we read that whole thing, both of us. And by the way, I think that maybe it was purposely for that long so people didn't want to go through the whole thing. Exactly, and find mm. out what was what. All right, good stuff. Let's move to our next conversation piece. Sorry, uh, sad story. Milwaukee yeah. man charged with dismembering black women after their date. What? 
Yeah, we talked about this on 10 and 10 uh, this week, but it's really a sad case. And Aisha and I were discussing how how hard it is and, and how you have to be careful with who you're meeting online, dating apps. This young lady, 19 years old, um, was talking to a man who's 33 years old uh, on the app. They met in a public place. Somehow they ended up moving away from the public place. He brutally murders her. He dismembers her. He burns her and burns the car. And she's she was missing for a while. But I will say, thank God, it was, this they ended up finding her faster than normally we hear these stories about. And they didn't um, find all of her. They didn't find all of her. And they so now her leg and her foot. And he's not speaking. He's not saying a word. Um, and so he will he has these charges against them. But it, it goes to show we talk about how this has become such a digital world. And most people nowadays don't go for like normal coffee and stuff. I'm pretty sure they talked quite a bit before they decided to actually meet face to face. However, you never know who you're really going to meet. So you should always make sure that you're meeting and staying in public places. And even if you can bring a friend along, she ain't got to be on the date. She could be having coffee over in the corner or at least let people know where you are and who you are going with. Be a sounding board. Her mother didn't even know that she was going out on this date. So the fact that this happened, I, there were so many red flags that, you know, you could say shoulda, coulda, woulda, but we want to bring this to your attention because you need to be very aware of what you are doing and who you are meeting in these digital streets. You really and truly don't know. Perfect example. And Aisha and I did speak about this on 10 and 10. I have secret jewelry that will notify the police and give them where I am if I ever feel in danger. All I have to do is touch it. And even your phones, your iPhones, you can set it up to do a, a, an SOS with a certain amount of taps on the side of your phone that will contact your emergency contacts and will also send out an SOS to the police. And that's another form of layer of protection if you don't have a friend or you're not telling somebody you're meeting people. Although if you can't tell somebody you're meeting someone nine times out of 10, you shouldn't be going to meet that person in the first place. But this does not forgive the fact that this man took this young girl and brutally murdered her, has no regrets. Guys, no regrets. He just walks in like he don't even care. Like, Ann, oh, Ann. And now why. there is no why. He, he it, probably he woke up that morning, decided that's what he was going to do. And, and that, cause that's where we are right now on the levels of crazies out here. But now this poor mother is going to have to deal with not having a daughter in her life. And we don't know what her beautiful story would be or what she could have become all because someone had the idea that he was going to go out and murder that day. It, um, it, it is so disturbing because, um, you know, the two of you are married and I'm out here single and dating is, it is weird right now because um, most people meet and, and start to form relationships online through any of these apps. Um, and sometimes those apps can get weird. Like, for example, I had a guy ask me if I liked, if I could do an older man, if I liked older men. And he was like 78 and then like, um, you're older than my father. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't do that. You're older than my father. You're closer to my grandfather's age. And, um, just it's, it's weird, but the signs that people can't pick up. Remember when we were younger, Lala, they always used to tell you to watch out for the nice boys because they're the ones that undercover. Oh, are, yes. Are sneaky and doggish. That, that pretty much holds for these internet streets people. Yeah. And then you got to be aware of the nice ones sometimes, but this, this to me really hurts because that poor woman, she young woman, she had no idea that she was meeting her killer. Yeah, exactly. And, and she thought this was going to turn into something that could be a promising relationship. 
Instead, he comes up there being, you know, thinking, oh, this is going to be the end. Exactly. Now, I'm also extremely proud for the people like they went to a bar um, and the bartenders and the waitresses were very on it. They were able to tell the police a lot of information, which caught him very quickly. Um, and, and, and normally if it's someone in our community, we are way months down the road before we hear anything about these cases. Uh, but people who were involved and who could report on what they could did, they stepped up. It was, it was the perfect example of see something, say something, because they didn't take long to tell the police what they saw. Yeah. And, and I really hope they, they haven't, introduced this and no one has said it, but I, I really hope that it didn't have a racial component to it. Right. On okay. top, because on top of that tragedy, that would be even worse. So right. Michelle says for a black woman, they worked fast. Yes, they did. Um, just for the victim being a black woman, they worked fast. Yes. Ryan says very true. There can never be too many precautions, even when you don't see any red flags at all. Fitnet's IQ cam says sad. And she also says, little word, Aisha, 70 what? Yeah, no thanks. Yep, 78. 78. I'm like, dude was a whole 30 years older than me. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Be careful. Be careful. I'm not trying. And I'm saying this to men and women. Yes. Not just because women. honey, don't forget that uh, listen, Aisha and I know there's a whole series called Deadly Women. Yes. You are not oh, yeah. oh I love you. On ID on ID network, yes. Those oh, women are ruthless. <laughs> Those women are ruthless. Trust. I mean they look, they've got what whole 14, 15, 20 seasons of, of uh yes. Deadly yes. Women. Yes, yes. So for people who don't know, all three of the people you're either hearing or watching right now were all true crime people. Right? Also, there's the one about the um the wives with knives. Yes. 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 There, there's that one. And then there's the one about um killer boyfriend. Yeah. So y'all, yeah, it happens. Yes. She, you think she gonna overpower you? No. Women are real good about getting you where you don't expect it, especially in your food and your drink. So you better be careful. Talk, talk, and turn, and when, look, and if you turn your back, you best believe she's got a hammer. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Michelle says that 78-year-old man wants a nurse. <laughs> no, what he wants is a funeral director. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, 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 a funeral director. That's crazy. Wow. That's uh, would That's pretty that's pretty foul. <laughs> yeah, but no, I this is a really sad 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 story yeah. and I just say yeah and yeah. it's I it's interesting uh I hear that uh, the the digital dating streets I've heard some pretty scary stories. Do mm -hmm. you know how look it's not even the scary part. Um, I changed my photo on my um, on one of my profiles, and I my mailbox filled up with like sixty five messages. Mm -hmm. I saw that Aisha. It's cute too. Uh, sixty five. Yeah, about two thirds of those messages were sexual. Oh. All right, let's move to the last call. And so that and, and so that's the, like to me that that makes that makes this whole dating thing weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh enough said. Enough said. All right. Uh let's go to our last conversation piece. Not a sad, not not a good, not 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 a happy one. And from one sad story to another sad story. So, Aisha we're going to let you lead on this. Mandisa, go ahead. Um, I met Mandisa in 1996 at Fisk University. Um, her dorm room was right across the hall from mine. And um, the first thing I heard before I even like knocked on the door to say hello was her singing. She was in the room singing. And 
Um, if you were around Mandy, so Mandy, so was always singing and, and you enjoyed it. You liked it. And, you know, that year she auditioned for um, the, the musical that the school did, that Fisk did, and it was Dream Girls, and she played Effie. And I remember I saw, I went two nights. The first night when she sang, um, I'm Not Going, oh. um, I had tears in my eyes. And uh, the next night we went, me and my friends went, because her father was her father flew in from um, Texas, and so we went with him um, to watch. And he just cried every time she sang. Um, and Mandisa and I had we had a good friendship. We had a weird friendship. Talk about two people who were probably so much like. Sometimes they didn't get along. <laughs> um. But I was thinking about how, you know, she and I used to, like, we all used to go to Chile all the time because it was close to the campus. But there'd be some late, late nights and it's just me and her. And it's like, let's let's go. We go. And we would share that chocolate chip cookie thing in the skillet because that was her favorite. And, um, and we would just sit and talk and laugh. And she had a great great laugh and um a way of saying things you know she's like right. and then just like um when I have my daughter Mindisa and I have been in touch and my daughter's probably one so it's like close to 2004 and I had been watching American Idol since I was pregnant in 2001 and I said to Mandy, so I said, you know, and I actually still, we were emailing each other. And I actually, I found the emails um, the other day, uh, yesterday. And um, I said, you know, you should audition for American Idol. And she was like, no, nah, I don't think so. You know, she's like, I don't think I want to do the TV, the TV route. Next thing I know, when the season came, there she was. You know, and I believe that was the same season as uh, J Hud and Fantasia, mm -hmm. and um, just the performance that she did on that show of "I'm Every Woman" by Shaka Khan. I knew she was going to nail it the way that she did because I'd heard her sing it before, but. Um, being that Whitney Houston was her favorite artist, she gave it the Whitney Houston version um, from the Bodyguard soundtrack. And so the notes were even a bit more ambitious, but when she had to hit all those notes, I, I knew that night that she was gonna be um, one of the top ones that night. And I don't think I've ever been so proud. And then when her album came out, we talked and she had her book coming out and we chatted about that. Um, and she, she was very honest about experiencing depression and talking about mental health. And I think that is something that um, uh, most artists and most creative people are never really honest about. Creative people, um, depression hits them hard. Mm -hmm. it, really, it really, really does. And there are days when, you know, you feel like being creative and then there are other days where it's like, you don't feel like doing anything. You just want to be left alone. Um, and she, um, but she, you know, she had such deep faith in um, God and, and Jesus. And um, I think that is what, kept her on a straight and narrow path through the music business, but she also found her niche because, you know, back when I knew, you know, when, when we were like grown, coming through as young women, you know, she wanted to be a superstar like, like Whitney Houston, right? But um, when she got her contract and she stayed in Nashville, um, she found her niche in contemporary Christian music and she made some good music. And um, even when even when Robin Roberts came back from GMA, 
um, from her breast cancer recovery, she did an interview with Mandisa and said oh. that her song Overcomer really helped her. Um, and she was also a Fisk Jubilee singer. So she had that tradition as well. And we're, you know, we're always so proud of that. But I am devastated. Um, all of us that lived on that wing, that C3 wing, are pretty much just numb. And um, she's the first one of our group to go. Oh. And um, last year we lost another friend, Shaka White Ducre, who was in the Elvis movie. She played Big Mom Thornton. She oh. was found in her sleep last year. And um, those two are two of the best singers I know to come out of Fist. And um, I miss my friend. I hear you. Yeah. Well, I, I know she's heard what you've just shared. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just want to say again, condolences to you and especially her and her family and the Fisk family. Mm -hmm. A real difficult time. She had such a beautiful smile and she was always, she was always smiling and, um, even when it hurt. Got it. I think we will end the conversation with that. As always, I want to say thank you, especially this week, to both ladies for taking time out of their positive productive schedule to hang out with y'all. Since I how, see if I can get some Kentucky blue blood or purple blood, it's blue blood Kentucky, Kentucky blue blood for yes. long. But Lala's wearing purple but blue blood into my veins. And uh, so first things first, uh, flirty hair. Where can, people, <laughs> where can people get a hold of you? Well, guys, X let me back on. So uh, I, I'm, I'm back on uh, Zitter, 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 Xylophone, Zitter, <laughs> whatever it's called. And I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook as Living the Lala. I look forward to seeing you there. Yes, and big shout out to Dr. Tachi last night for stepping in. Big time, big yes. time. All right. Oh, and Dr. Tachi, wherever you are, however you're listening to this, you're always welcome here. Aisha? Um, you can reach me at Aisha, AK Staggers at Instagram, Aisha Staggers on Twitter, and um, please join our Discord group because we can talk there. All right. Thank you so much. All right. How can you get a hold of me? Here are all the places. The Dr. Vibe Show website, the, the T H E D R V I B E S H O W dot com, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, The Dr. Vibe Show, Instagram at the D R V I B E S H O W dot com, X slash Twitter, because when I entered and said, well, not everyone's used to X, may not know what X is yet. Okay, no problem. X slash Twitter at D R V I B E S H O W and email. Dr. Period V I B E at the Dr. V I B E S H O W dot com. All right, you can watch replays of this epic conversation on the Doctor Vibe Show at YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and on the website the Dr. V I B E S H O W dot com. Got some few last comments here, so let's swing them on. First things first. Wonderful show, Jen Meyer says. Sylvia says, "How power how power." Her powerful memory will be. Thank you. So you hang up for the whole show. Love it. April Watson says, wish you heaven prints. Tomorrow, eight years. Absolutely. Eight years. So that makes April 21st. Eight years since the royal purple man has left us. All right. That's it. That's all. So let's call it another epic conversation. As always, live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions, then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Don't just manage your time, manage your energy. And remember to give yourself grace. God bless. Peace to you all. Keep the faith. Walk good. And Mendisa, we send our love to you.